Hi, I'm Dump Truck DS, and welcome back to Mapping for Quake with Trench Broom. In this episode, we're continuing on our entities. This is part three. So if you haven't watched the other two, stop now and go back. Uh, the playlist is linked down below, and you'll be able to find part one of entities and then continue from there. You know how to trigger if you watched the previous tutorial you know how to trigger a monster. And that's basically what this was. As I was play testing the level, I'd walk through this and then he'd jump. And every once in a while, the sound wouldn't play and it just didn't feel very cinematic and cool. So what I did is just a split second earlier, you're heading towards this door. And when you get in the vicinity, you know, you will trigger him just a hair earlier. If you had been fighting the knights and have been having trouble and been backed up into this trigger, he would have come up and attacked you at the end. So it would have been cool either way. But, you know, the assumption is you're going to kill the knights, then come through here, trigger the ogre. He's jumping down. Now let's look at how he jumps down. There's an entity called a trigger monster jump. And you make it with the trigger brush, as I've done here. You apply the monster trigger jump by right clicking, create brush entity, trigger monster jump. Let's look at the key values for this. It's pretty easy. This one I believe was, yeah, this one was defaulting to zero. Um, so I didn't need to change anything. You can tell by the arrows, as you've probably noted before, what direction it's facing. So it, it has a default of a height of 200 and a speed of 200. And it's, those sound like a lot, but they're really not that big. So he kind of jumps up maybe, uh, well, he, he jumps up 200 quake units. And so uh, that's as high as he's going to get. So he kind of does this arc over and then down. And um, for this type of thing, that looked fine. Uh, so I left it at the default. You can play with those. I made a map where I had two shamblers jumping out and I had to really tweak it because they were jumping a really far distance. And I was trying to get one to land in a certain spot and the other to land in a certain spot. So you, you can play with these a lot. There's things you can do with the height and the speed attributes here. There's no need for any spawn flags on this. So let's move on. So doors are actually really easy to make. You just have to make sure that you choose the right angle. If it is triggered, make sure they have the right target name. If you don't have a target name, this thing will just open automatically. A funk door will open when the player gets within a certain range. So a funk door's wait is usually three seconds. It opens, waits three seconds, and closes again. And you, you can trigger it um, just by walking up to it. So when the player comes over here and they're faced with the gold key door, it's basically two gold key doors. This one travels in that direction, 270, and this one travels in that direction. And I just want you to realize that it's not one funk door, it's two funk doors. Let's look at the key value pairs on this side. We have the class name, we have the angle 270, and we can see the arrow is pointing 270. We have the sounds, spawn flags. This one's important, gold key is required. That's something that needs to be set. I explained the weight, but just as a recap, so if there's a weight negative one, this thing's gonna open and stay open basically. And then the lip is 16. And the reason I did 16 is because I wanted those spikes to kind of be sticking out just aesthetically, but not be in the player's way. So that was the perfect uh, distance to have a lip sticking out of those doors. Same here, just a different function. This type of gold key door doesn't really need a target name. You just set that spawn flag and it, once you have the gold key, you can open it. All right, let's get to this plat here. So I double click to select it and we can see the key value pairs and plats are pretty simple to work with. Uh, you just basically build your geometry and then right click, create brush entity, funk plat. When I made this plat, the default key value pairs were pretty good. I didn't really need to tweak them too much, although I did want to change the sound to uh, something more appropriate to the level. And then I did tweak height. So when I play tested it, I noticed that the plat was starting a little too low in the level and I wanted it flush with this floor here. So that's super easy to do. I just took 208 and subtracted 16 units and that's 192. In general, I like my plats flush with the floor, at least this one, but you may want to have it higher, so you just lower this number. So let's say you wanted your plat to stick up by um, eight units. You would just make this number 184. 
you'd subtract uh, eight from it or 16 or whatever. So that's an important thing to remember because sometimes your plats, you're, you're going to need different depths and heights and things. Other than that, they're pretty automated. So once the player crosses this threshold and is touching the plat, it'll raise up and then it'll go down. You can also trigger a plat. So let's say we wanted to keep this up until the player either killed a monster or hit a button. You just give it a target name and then target that. So I'm going to step off the plat here and show you something. See, um, so if you notice, the lighting is hitting the platform in a certain way, and that's going to be kind of baked in. You'll see it lower down with it. So plats are built in the upward position, and they're lit in that upward position. So you have to keep that in mind when you're lighting, and we'll get to that later. Okay, let's move on to this other platform, which is really technically a funk door entity, and we'll get to that in a second. First of all, we have a button here, and as I said in the playtest, you know, I kind of wanted to trick the, uh, or at least just kind of mislead the player and say, well, if you hit this button, these doors might open. So what I made was this button. If you notice, the, the arrow for the button is going to 180 degrees. It's a larger button than the other one. It's some, um, oh, hello, it's eight units. And what I did was I made the lip two on this one, so when it goes, 180 degrees in, there'll be two quake units sticking out so it doesn't go flush with the wall and cause some ugliness in the game engine. So the target here is plat one and we'll go over here and we'll start to talk about the funk door that that is linked to, that that button com controls. I made a three layer kind of platform and the ammo sitting on top of it there. And you'll notice that the arrow inside is pointing downwards. That's the direction it'll move. And very important to remember, that is negative two. So up in quake, as far as doors are concerned and some other entities as well. Negative two is down, negative one is up. So that's it, up and down. We've got a speed, I changed the speed on this. I don't remember what the default was. We can delete this real quick and see what the speed is. It's defaulted at 100, I'll undo that. So I slowed it down a little bit. I wanted to be a little more obvious. So again, a group of brushes, I right clicked, I made brush entity, you know, funk door. Now, th the reason I wanted to show you this is because doors are more powerful and more flexible than plats. The main difference between a funk plat and a funk door that's acting like a platform is this. Basically a funk plat, once it's triggered, it will continue to go up and down forever. With a funk door acting like a platform, you can toggle it on and off, you can trigger it, and there are some limitations to it, but in general, it's a lot more flexible than just your simple platform. So we have our funk door that's kind of acting like a elevator or platform. Okay, so I walk up to it and the door opens, right? It, it's not gonna do anything because I'm interrupting the door. I'm kind of blocking it. It's not doing anything. So let's figure that out. So I walk away and it's gonna close. And so this is a funk door without a, a target name. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a target name of toggle two. Okay, and then I'm gonna hide this so that I can work behind there. I've got this button already set up here. I'm gonna give it a target of toggle two. What I have now is a platform that's triggered with this button. Now I have a weight of three on here, so it's gonna reset itself. I, the button's sticking out, and then if, if you can see right here, it's overlapping, but as soon as I hit it, it's gonna recess into the wall. And that's because I have a lip of negative four. You use a negative number for it to go farther back and it works perfectly. With this little simple map, you could just use a, a funk plat, but I wanted to show you the possibilities of, of using a door. You also use doors as traps and things like that. There's a famous map uh, pack called Beyond Belief and there's one uh, where the, you, know, you hit a button, you shoot a button and, it, and, and a door comes down and smashes a shambler so you don't have to fight the shambler. You can use, doors like that. One other example is that doors can be toggled open or shut. Toggling a door is very simple. You basically have a button or some other trigger. In this scenario, I've got a button here, then I've got a door here, and I've got another button here. Hit open, now it's not gonna close. It's gonna wait until I toggle it closed. In order to do this, I have my button here and it's targeting a uh, target name Toggle. The target name of this door is Toggle. This button out here, 
also is toggle so that you can see the the lines here now the secret to doing this is in spawn flags so you select spawn flags you first don't link them now i said earlier that a funk door is two pieces it's really two pieces of the same entity so don't link separates those two into two different things and for some reason i don't know why you need to set this in order to toggle then you also set the toggle spawn flag and that's it so this button triggers that door stays open it's ignoring the wait key down here the wait is set to default on this but it's ignoring it there you go we're getting through these entity tutorials pretty quickly uh, and i know there's a lot of information but there's a lot more to come we're going to cover teleporting players teleporting monsters uh re trigger relays so that you can have more complicated interactions and, and events in your levels i'm also going to show you how to kind of wrap up your level with a ending trigger to will send you to the next level and also the intermission camera that you see at the end of levels it's pretty easy stuff thanks for hanging in there we'll see you in the next tutorial